This story has several variations, but it often begins with a woman who's too busy to cook dinner that night. Maybe she's a working wife with a demanding job that gives her too little time to manage the home front. So on the way home, she decides to take a shortcut. She stops off at a fast food franchise and buys a bucket of batter fried chicken. It's quick, it's easy, and she figures her husband won't mind. But later, when she gets home, she feels a bit guilty about not preparing a homemade meal for dinner. So she cooks up an idea. She decides to serve the chicken in a romantic, candlelit setting. She thinks herself rather clever, turning a fast food pickup into a special occasion. Wow. And when her husband gets home, he's impressed with the lavish setting. It looks like she's made a big fuss over him, and he thinks he married the most wonderful woman in the world. As they sit down, the husband is ready for a great meal. It's my new recipe. Thank you. Just delicious. And they both feel like they're out on the town. The wife is feeling better about disguising her little shortcut. But as they start to eat, the husband is struck by the odd taste of his food. And when he checks it out, he's stunned by what he sees. A deep fried rat. In some versions of the story, the husband is rushed to the emergency room. And in other versions, the couple sues the chicken chain for millions of dollars. This legend seems very likely. But is there even a kernel of truth to it? This story is one that probably to some extent that we've all experienced where we found something in our food that didn't belong there. Uh, whether it was an insect, a hair, a piece of glass, a piece of plastic. There are a whole set of legends about food contamination. The story is usually attributed to KFC, formerly Kentucky Fried Chicken. And the reason seems to be an unwritten rule of urban legends. If a legend deals with a commercial product, it's usually the leading company in the field that becomes the target of the story. When I first encountered the story, it was in the 70s. People weren't eating out as much. Kentucky Fried Chicken was one of the most uh, popular places for fast food. There wasn't that much competition. But this story has antecedents. In earlier decades, similar legends attached themselves to what was then seen as exotic cuisine. There was always that little worry about the Chinese restaurant because at that time there was a legend about the person who went to the Chinese restaurant and they found a finger in their chop suey. Stories like this are culturally biased to shock Westerners. Fact is, in some Asian countries like Thailand and China, rat meat is not always taboo. Of course, it's deemed polluting in our own culture where rats are not considered edible. Uh, in many societies, rodents of all types are considered edible. Some years ago, the Chinese government, in the face of a rather profound infestation of rats, simply declared that the rat should be caught and cooked and published recipes in the newspaper for cooking rats. And people dutifully did it and uh, ate rats. Ironically, the origins of the legend may have nothing to do with fast food and everything to do with social stereotypes. It plays to us because women should be home cooking food. You should have home-cooked dinners. But this story started circulating when women were just beginning to go out and have jobs. So they couldn't do it. A more modern version of the legend says that Kentucky Fried Chicken changed its name to KFC in 1991 because they no longer used real chickens. It was alleged they created some bizarre genetically engineered creatures that were bred for their meat but without beaks, feathers, or feet, a claim that's entirely untrue. 
Yet another false rumor said they were breeding mutant chickens with six legs. The joke was that you couldn't tell how they tasted because nobody could catch them. The problem with these stories is that KFC doesn't raise chickens at all. It buys them from suppliers, just like any other restaurant. Still, contaminants in food are a reality. And the chicken fried rat account has been around for a long time. The trick is detecting the clues that separate the true reports from the bogus ones. For instance, a burger chain was once accused of cutting costs by diluting their meat with ground worms. But the story makes no sense because worms cost more per pound than beef. Eating out is more popular than ever, which means we rely upon experts more than ever to ensure that what goes on behind the scenes is kosher. For them, the chicken fried rat story is a familiar one. It's very pervasive. Having uh, worked with the department, um, it was always tr a story that was traded among inspectors. We have had cases where facilities have had such an infestation that uh, the insects or the animals have gotten into the food. We had received a complaint once of a rat's tail that was in a pastry product. What we found upon analyzing the sample is that it wasn't a rat's tail, but it was a piece of mop string. Today, the California Pasta Company gets a clean bill of health. But what about the chicken legend? To be quite honest, it was never corroborated, and there are no records, at least in Los Angeles County. It was a hoax that started on the internet. It's completely ludicrous. KFC has extremely strict guidelines and procedures for all of our restaurant operations, and extremely strict standards for our food safety and preparation that's followed by all of our suppliers, distributors, and our restaurants. The truth of the legend is that there's nobody here but us chickens. This is one critter story where you feel sorry for the man. But there are other urban legends where you feel sorry for the rodent.